Okay. It's, uh, my, it's a title for my conference, my conference and uh, so uh, my talk is in two parts. Uh, the first one is a short presentation of the contribution of the non-smooth contact dynamics. A very short presentation. And the main part is a uh, uh, presentation of some limitation of uh, this approach. And especially, I focus on the inconsistency in uh, some granular systems. And very simple at the beginning. Yeah, but starting from uh, numerical difficulty occurring in some uh, simulation, as we'll see later. So I'm starting with uh, a best of uh, a success story of the non-smooth contact dynamics using the LMGC90 software. It is a software developed in Montpellier. It's a toolbox for the simulation of multi-contact system and granular system uh, especially. Uh, the the non-smooth contact dynamics is dedicated to dynamics, of course, but uh, it, is used, it, is, it is possible to, to use for static situation. And for example, on the left, we have a, a bimodal force network underlined in this picture with, in red, the weak ne network, and in black, uh, the strong network. Uh, it's uh, a work from Rajai uh, recently. And on the, on the right, we have another application given by Moreau himself. Uh, Moreau underlines the special profile of the pressure at the bottom of a pile with this local minimum. It's not intuitive to have such a profile in a static pile. It depends on of the, the process of uh, building of the, of the pile, of course. It is possible to simulate a granular system with different regime in the system. Uh, sorry, it's, it's, it's a movie, but the movie doesn't run <laughs> in this situation. But we can see in this example, it is a rotating drum. We have a, a fluid, uh, fluid dynamics on the top and a static solid uh, behavior uh, below. And finally, an example in fast dynamics is a masonry. We have a movie, but it doesn't run too. <laughs> we have here uh, a, mass, uh, a building with a, a hybrid uh, modeling with finite element and discrete element for, for the colon. And it may be uh, submitted uh, to uh, seismic loading, but the movie doesn't run too. Sorry. It is possible to investigate material, uh, taking into account the microstructure in granular systems. We have in two examples. We have a, a, a pecking with a, a pentagons with sharp shape, and we have the influence of the, sh of the particle, the shape of the particle, on uh, the, sh the force chain or the force network. And we have the same uh, study on uh, a picking of pills with characterized by an uh, elongated shape in, on, the, on the right. So it's possible, it is another example applied to the textile. The textile is a mixture of sand and wire, and we have a comparison uh, of the behavior of the textile on the left and the uh, sand on the right, where well, the influence of the wire is illustrated with tension in, uh, in the material. And it is possible in this case, for example, to define an internal uh, length uh, in this material which, uh, for which the behavior is non-local. It is possible to study the influence of the wires in the trajectory of bullet impacting uh, a textile sample. The movie doesn't run yet. Uh, concept, in the domain of uh, multiphysics uh, coupling, we have a uh, couple uh, the LMGC90, the software, the granular software, we have fluid mechanics software to simulate, for example, submarine avalanches in this situation. 
and finally, uh, another example of a multiphysics coupling with uh, mechanical and electrical behavior. And we have in this uh, picture uh, a distribution of the electrical potential in a granulate uh, for uh, a given part of insulating particles. But I refer for other contribution to, to non-smooth mechanics or granular mechanics to uh, the invited session organized by Farhan Rajai and Joe Godard in this conference. So this uh, simulation are performed with in the general framework of the non-smooth contact dynamics. It is summarized in this diagram, this commutative diagram, where the main variables are uh, given. Uh, at the level of the grain, we have the generalized velocity, capital V, the generalized velocity, grain per grain, and the contact impulse, capital R, grain per grain. We have the equivalent variables at the level of the contact, small v and small r, relative velocity, contact per contact, and contact impulse, contact per contact. And to pass from the level of the grain to the level of uh, the contact, we have two linear connectivity mapping, H and its transpose, and this mapping assumes to be linear by approximation at each step, time step, of course. Uh, the non-smooth contact dynamics is uh, specially dedicated to the simulation of finite freedom dynamics, especially uh, a collection of rigid body, but not only. We can extend to uh, uh, finite element uh, Method involving uh, three types of non smoothness non smoothness, special non smoothness, non -smoothness um, where the interpenetration are expressed as a set of inequality. The non smoothness in law, because the seniority law and the contact law are expressed with multivalued relationship between kinematic and static variables. And finally, the temporal non smoothness occurring. Uh, between rigid bodies, that means collision, relative uh, velocity jumps. But the NSCD is first a formalism based on three, uh, three, three ideas. The dynamics is expressed via a differential measure of the generalized velocity. The non interpenetration is expressed in terms of velocity, approved by a viability, viability lemma. And finally, the Main, uh, the main unknown are the contact impulse at, at the contact via the Dolasius operator, which is introduced later. But it is also an algorithm based on a time stepping integration scheme and on a generic nonlinear solver of Gauss Idol type. But uh, in spite of the success story <laughs> uh, on, in a la large range of applications, uh, the NSCD may fail to give pertinent results in some situations, of course. It's not, it's not a panacea. Uh, uh, at, this is the opinion of uh, Jean-Jacques Moreau himself, as reported in this uh, citation. Uh, a physical uh, model and the mathematical uh, formalization uh, is nothing but a format for Moreau in the sense of data processing, and this format is necessary incomplete, and if the model is incomplete, it is possible to, to have no uh, exhaustive prediction, and in this case, we have maybe to change the model. In a French conference, Moreau uh, gives some precision about uh, this, uh, this opinion after a philosophical uh, consideration about the deterministic aspect or not of the universe. But Moreau was essentially interested by the plurality of solution. But uh, we'll see that if the plurality of solution is a drawback, uh, the lack of solution is, to my, to my opinion, uh, more boring. And I start with, sorry, I start with, with a limitation, and I start from an example. The example is here. It's the simulation of a sandbox. A sandbox is an allergical uh, device used by geophysicists for understanding the folding of sedimentary layers, 
we have so different folds uh, appearing during the, the process. And the sedimentary layers are submitted to tectonic effort with a moving wall in this. It is a, it is a movie, but it doesn't matter <laughs> too. And in this example, we have some numerical difficulties, and especially in the corner here, because we have wedging uh, effect, very arching effect, and we have some cumulative interpenetration in this, in this area. Sometimes we, we, we can have uh, uh, difficulty for convergence, as sometimes we have no convergence. We have convergence failure. And sometimes we have a cell correction of the interpenetration during the process after uh, uh, several time steps. But sometimes it's, it's not so friendly if we have accumulation of an interpenetration as, and the computation is not uh, correct, of course. It is possible to, to do uh, all, for example, in the, in the movie for evacuating some grades, but it's not exactly a solution. I think it's only a, a trick. Consequently, uh, we have practical question related to, to these uh, difficulties. How to control the evolution of dense granular systems submitted to moving worlds? How to relax the wedging effects? And related to the practical question, we have theoretical topics because these questions are related to the, all, to the ill possedness of the W matrix, W operator, which is in fact generally singular, and the combination of ill possedness and non smoothness leads to either indeterminacy, that means several solutions, or inconsistency, that means lack of solution. And the second question is, it is possible to propose a simple alternative modeling to the Coulomb law for in these situations. And it is useful to, uh, to investigate very simple granular system by end with one, three, two, three uh, disks only and some wall. And it, it is possible to, uh, to solve by end this system and simulate uh, two. The first one is a single disk in a corner with two walls, and the vertical walls uh, move. The dynamics is written is expanded for this uh, case in discrete time, where the mass matrix is here, the general velocity. And the relative velocity at the contact, small v, is the, affinf the affine mapping of the generalized velocity, capital V, and the, the the constant part, small v star, is naturally related to capital V star, which is a prescribed velocity to the moving wall. Then the system to solve in the non-smooth contact dynamics approach consists in two equations. The dynamic equation reduced to contact uh, by, introduced by the introduction of the W operator, which is expressed here using the uh, linear connectivity mapping H and H transpose. And the second equation is uh, a formally uh, expression. Uh, it's not exactly an uh, equation. It's in fact all uh, the behavior of the contact behavior is a set of equation and inequation, of course. This non-smoothness is here and the dynamics is here. The dynamics is expanded here. Finally, we have a simple piecewise linear system to solve in this case, with a linear part uh, where the W matrix is singular. The null space of W is the null space of H, and this null space is generated by a single vector, which is represented in this figure by these two impulse in opposite direction with, with the same magnitude, of course. And we have, in this case, uh, 16 region of linearities corresponding to the 16 contact status. We have two contacts, four statuses for, for, uh, per context. That means 16 uh, contact status. And in this system, it is possible to compute all potential solution provided by each region of linearities. 
And if the friction coefficient, the frictions coefficient are greater than one, six, uh, 15 regions of linearity provide a potential solution into the last region, the stick-stick region. And in this region, we have, in fact, no solution because the system to solve is very simple, is this, this linear system for which the right-hand side uh, is, no, is, is not orthogonal to the null space. And in this case, we have no solution, of course. But the algorithm from a numerical point of view, the algorithm the, and the nonlinear ergocidal solver gives us an infinite seconds of iterate where the norm of the iterates tend to infinity. It's characterized, this behavior characterizes the lack of solution, the inconsistency on the system. And we, this simple analysis is confined, of course, by a very simple experiment, uh, numerical experiment, with uh, friction less than one. We have a correct simulation with uh, some iteration per steps, but with uh, friction coefficient greater than one, we have no convergence. In fact, the maximum number of iteration is arbitrarily fixed to 100 in this case, and this maximum is reached at each iteration. And in this situation, we have an inadmissible internal penetration, of course. We can extend this analysis to to other system with two disks and four contacts, for example. In this case, it is still possible to, uh, to define a critical friction coefficient. Uh, it, is, uh, it, is it is given here by this formula. It is, in fact, related to the, to the theta uh, angle. And in this case, we can observe that uh, when the friction coefficient is great, we have no convergence in the first steps, like in the previous example, but it seems to have a, a self-correction because after 12 iterations, we have convergence again, but we can observe that it's not a, a complete self-correction because we have a residual interpenetration uh, even, uh, even if you have a motion. The last example is uh, interesting because we have two situations with three disks and five contacts. Uh, in the first case, we have a slack system. In this case, we have convergence, but the convergence is slow. The number of iterations is very large for, uh, for this simple system. And we can observe that the null space is localized on the corner it does not cross the wall system. It's a slow convergence characterizing, uh, characterize an uh, ill-conditioned system, not exactly ill pole system. But in the second situation, with the same number of disks and the same number, of, the same, uh, same number of contacts, we have a confined system for which we have no convergence. And in this case, the null space uh, cross the wall system and we look over a uh, ill posed system. So, in fact, this situation uh, falls within the uh, old topics. It is the pen levé paradox introduced uh, in, the, in, the, in the previous century. Uh, pen levé uh, considers that uh, the inconsistency of some frictional contact uh, pr problem is an inacceptable defect of the Coulomb's law is a very uh, radical position. <laughs> Later, Le Cornu, uh, for Le Cornu, uh, is not so serious, and he considers that velocity jumps allow to escape from inconsistent configuration. Uh, in the in recent investigation of the pain levé paradox, I underline the work of uh, Geno Bragliato, who define a critical friction coefficient of the pen levé example. The pen levé example is like a shark stick on a blackboard, like represented here, but it is the problem continues in time. It's analysis of the problem continues in time. And finally, for, for Moreau, pen levé paradox is following the opinion of uh, Le Cornu. Moreau thinks that the 
Penelope paradox is the discreting, discreting locution. And today, one not surprised to see a model refusing certain value of the parameter. This was not the case at the beginning of the 20th century. Yes. But Moreau concedes uh, some, uh, that uh, the possibility to have frictional paroxysm, that means tangents and shocks, when uh, the contact force uh, increase tend to infinity and in the situation uh, is characterized by Moreau as a frictional paroxysm. But Moreau was essentially interested by the plurality of solution and not by uh, the lack of solution. We have a study of Moreau about the plurality of solution represented by a cloud of points in this case. For a discrete contact uh, problem, discretized in time, uh, after a pioneering uh, work of Clarbing and Pang, but for a static problem, for not for a dynamic one, for a static problem with deformable bodies. Recently, Akari and his co collaborators uh, prove a criterion for the existence of the problem on uh, single time steps. And the criterion is the following. Uh, small V star, it is a prescribed relative velocity, has to belong to the dual cone of the null space of the mapping H and uh, the Cartesian product of the Coulomb's cone. And if we applied this criterion to the one disk uh, system, we have uh, the null space is defined here. And if the friction coefficient is uh, greater than one, the intersection of the null space and the, Cartesian, the Coulomb's cone is given by this expression. And the dual cone is given by this definition. We have, in fact, to verify that small v star belongs to the dual space. That means we have to compute the scalar product of n times v star. It is, in fact, equal to minus capital V star, the prescribed velocity, uh, to, the moving, to the moving wall. Then, if the wall is pulled the criterion is verified and the existence is assured. If the, uh, the wall is pushed, the criterion is not satisfied and we have maybe no existence. I, I say maybe because we can observe that the criterion does not take into account the external loading, in this case, the gravity. If, indeed, if we inverse the gravity, the criterion is maybe not satisfied, but it is possible to have a solution with, uh, with the release of the contact, for example. What's the alternative to this uh, inconsistency? We have two ways. The first way consists in enriching the model of the body. Maybe consider deformable bodies, but uh, Moreau estimates that, that the occurrence of elasticity does not evade this difficulty. I think this opinion has to be uh, discussed. Uh, consider maybe breakable bodies, but it's not an ta uh, easy task for rigid bodies. We have to define a fracture criterion, a fracture profile. And I think the simplest way is to, enriching, to enrich the contact law. It consists in uh, modeling the fracture of the, the local fracture, the fracture of the asperity in the contact area for, from a bodily point of view. And from a numerical point of view, it consists in forbidding infinite tangential contact impulse. And for that, we have a model for that, the Coulomb over one model, which is a combination of a Coulomb law and a Tresca law, where the, the tangential force are bounded by a Tresca type model, a Tresca uh, threshold. Geometrically, the Coulomb cone are simply replaced by pen type sets represented here, where the tangential component of the impulse are bounded uh, clearly in the tangential direction, of course. And we can verify that with the Coulomb 01 method, we have now 
convergence, uh, the Tresca threshold is reached for one contact and not the two, and the convergence is restored in this situation clearly. We have the same behavior, of course, for the three uh, disk example with only two contacts uh, over the, the, the five. Uh, the, the Tresca threshold is reached in this for the two contacts. Uh, it is possible to extend to larger uh, granular system. The first one is still a structural sample where it is built for activating all the contacts and we have a similar situation uh, with, on the left with Coulomb, on the right with Coulomb Oro 1. For a non-structural sample with 30 disks, the situation is more simple to analyze uh, because in this situation we have some uh, residual interpenetration. It's not so easy to see on, on, on the figure, of course. Then, the conclusion. The first one is a practical recommendation. As long as possible, avoid to confine, to uh, avoid the confined granulates with moving boundary, or moving a part of the boundary. Uh, it may be seen that uh, a, a precautionary principle and concerning theoretical topics, we have to find and maybe to prove an existence criterion for the Coulomb or one models. It's just uh, an idea at, at present. In fact, the criterion is, was, will be necessary, absolutely, for avoiding the pathological cases, uh, even in frictionless case. But we, we have an open question for the frictional paroxysm, the tangential shocks, because it seems that uh, the Coulomb one model erased, eliminated this, uh, this, the possibility of these uh, tangential shocks. It's, however, such internal shocks seem occur in practice, as suggested by experimental acoustic emission uh, in some granulate packing. Thus, the interest of investigating the propagation of shocks with the nosmus contact dynamics, it is not an easy task. Uh, in this situation. It's a, another limitation of the smooth, con the smooth contact dynamics. And finally, we have to implement, for, of course, Coulomb Oro 1 in the NMGC 90 software. Thank you very much. All right.